What's up guys, Tim Halstead here with another episode of Drag Boss Garage. Welcome back my friends, I'm glad you're here. Kind of give you a recap, that last video I put up, the Ford 351 Cleveland myths and more, that really got people going. A lot of dialogue going on both Facebook and YouTube. And I appreciate you guys contributing to my channel and helping the comments go further and education go further. It's information that some of us might not know. But it's tough to make a blanket statement, like I did, that the Ford 351 Cleveland is not a small block. And if you look at the identification purposes from Ford and the nomenclature, that's the name of the block. The block was labeled as a 351 Cleveland 335 engine series. That's what they called it. You know, they didn't, like I said before, they didn't call it a small block Ford. Now, when I made that statement, I didn't say anything about physical attributes of that block in comparison to the 289, the 302, or the 351. Because they do share things in common, like bell housing, or spacing. But that's not what I said. I just said a simple statement. A lot of people not necessarily took offense to it, but they wanted to state their opinion on why it was not, or why it was. And that was a purpose, to get some dialogue going. I want to build this channel. I've looked through the stats, and it looks like a lot of people are watching these videos, but the people that are watching them are not subscribed. There's a large majority that aren't subscribed. And I ask you to go ahead and like these videos, push the picture of the Pro Stock Motor, and subscribe so I can build this channel. We can bring a lot more in-depth Cleveland information and drag race information in general. And that's what my goal is. So I appreciate that. I want to give a shout out to Andy Wood from Unity Motorsports Garage. He has a channel on here. And he put down a nice summary, which if you look, you'll see it on here, which is the blocks that other manufacturers make and what they classify in regards to cubic inch. For example, I think he said the AMC is the same block from a small cubic inch displacement to their larger displacement. You know, there's no big block or small block. And that's what people are getting caught up with. But it also brings to the table a bunch of discussion. And that's where the ideas start flowing. And that's what we want to do. I also want to give a shout out to um, Dave Silva. Thanks, Dave. I appreciate you watching my channel. He has a Grand National that runs a Cleveland in it. He sent me this. We all like tunnel rams, that's for sure. So check this out. This is a TRE competition tunnel ram. It's pretty bad looking, man. Look at those intake manifold runners. You can see they're quite round there, but square here. So there's some velocity going on there as it gets smaller. Now this is for a 9.5 deck height, he told me, for CHI heads or I think Yates C3 heads. I don't know what I'll do, but I'm going to send it to Scott Miller at Illumino. I see some of you guys are hooking up with him. He makes the intake manifolds look awesome. So we'll see what this come back has. I think it's going to look stellar. And then I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I'll, I'll figure something out. So I also wanted to throw a shout out to Rusty Glidden. Thanks for talking with me. we got a lot of stuff coming on with him. As soon as I get caught up with everything, do me a favor, send some prayers his way. He has some family issues he needs some help with. So prayers for him. I also want to throw a shout out to Jimmy Huff. Him and I have been talking quite a bit, especially with his pro stock, because he's an expert at the high port cylinder heads. And we've been shooting some ideas back and forth. So he's interested in some TND shaft rocker setups. I'd like to get a couple sets, one for the track boss, and then one for eventually either this or a pro stock build. Tim Kindred also was interested in that. So I had talked to TND before about sponsoring me. They said, no way, they don't sponsor anybody. But you know what? I'll give them a call back now and see if I can get them to help us out. Now, this video here is going to be about the 351 Cleveland oiling system. The deficiencies in it and what we can do to make it better. And when you have to do that. I'm going to break this down into a discussion on the stock oiling system, what happens when you put in the main bearing or the cam restrictor plugs that go into the mains that Jack Roush maybe invented or whoever, but Moroso sells them now. And also 
Tim Meyer's cam bearings, his restrictor cam bearings. Thanks, Tim Meyer. Track Boss Performance Products. I talked to him for probably a couple hours the other day about the oiling system to, to make sure I understand it because this is a tough thing. If you don't get the concept, you're going to miss out on why you're doing certain things to restrict oil to certain places, the benefits and the risks of not doing that. And that's my object with this video. I just got a couple more shout outs and then we'll get down to the video. I want to give a quick one to Clarence Roy. Clarence, I appreciate the, the help you've given me. He's got that this white Mustang. You can see it there. It's a Fox body, and that's going to be a Cleveland. He's thinking about putting a power adder, adder on it. Just like Dave Silva, he's got a, that Cleveland and the Grand National. He's going to put turbos on that and see how that runs. But Clarence hooked me up with a set of these pistons. These are Ross pop-up pistons for a Cleveland. They're pretty nice units. They're at least 13 to 1, depending on the other specs of the motor. But if you see this block right here, this is what we're going to use for the demonstration with the oiling system. This is actually my first block, my first stroker motor. It was a 377 cubic inch Cleveland I got from Ford Performance Solutions in California. Troy Bowen was the guy that has that company. And so I ran this with ported 4V heads, an offset ground Ford crankshaft, and I think just massage stock rods. 377 cubic inches and that at 35.95 was running 12.05 with me in it that was with a c6 transmission it wasn't fast enough for me i talked to troy i said hey can we put a roller cam in it he said yes he sent me a roller cam i think the specs were 266 274 689 690 something like that you know 105 but i put that in that motor right off the trailer it was running 11.25 1120s. And that's when I started building the stroker motors for the Cleveland. So this does not, this block is not filled. It has an oil restriction kit in it, but that's about it. And once you see inside this, you're going to see the differences that massaging that oil system is going to help you in the long run. So it's going to be a good project block that we can fill on camera to show you how to fill things. We can modify the oil system. And I got this set of pistons. It's 30 over. As long as it stays that measurement, we can build another 357 Cleveland. And I got a set of those heads I got from you, Jimmy Huff, the C302B heads, those are complete. Why not put that on and see what we can do? But like I said, I get all these projects, I just wanna move forward with them. And this one here is the, the, the one that's gotta be done next. We only got about four to six weeks or so. Now, the biggest shout out goes to Jason Murphy. Thank you, Jason Murphy, for helping me with the 351 Cleveland, especially all the little tricks that you know, because he's from down under in Australia. He knows a lot about Cleveland's. And we chat back and forth on Messenger, and he's the one that suggested I make this video. Because the issue with the oiling system is not everybody's on the same page. We're all at different learning levels. We're all at different knowledge bases. And what I'm trying to do is bring everybody together so we're all on the same page and we can understand and talk the same talk. And you can get the same benefits that I do to get your combination to the max effort. So what we'll do is talk about the oiling system. I got a diagram that I got off the internet and I'll put that up and then you can kind of follow along and I'll try to show you the block at the same time. Hopefully this works out because if you can see both at the same time, it makes a big difference on understanding the flow pattern. Now the example I'm gonna use is a Windsor block because it's a Ford motor and it has priority oiling compared to the Cleveland being a non-priority oiling system. And what that means is this, and this is an important concept to grab. Priority main oiling is when there is a dedicated oil galley that feeds the main bearings, which feed the rods. So it's a separate galley. Then there's also two other galleys that feed the lifters on both sides. Now that's a priority system. The Cleveland does not have a priority system. And they did that when I read for cost consciousness to try to cut the cost down with doing the drilling of the galleys. So they try to do everything with just basically one galley, which is the right side that feeds everything. The left side kind of has another send off from the fifth main, but that right side is, is key, it's crucial. And when you see this diagram, it'll all play out and you'll understand what I'm saying. But that's the difference. On a Cleveland, they try to oil both the main bearings and the rods and 
send oil to the cam bearings off from the same pathway. And it's just, it can't keep up. After seven grand, 6,500, seven grand, that's when it starts to tax it and struggle. Now I will tell you that Jason Murphy told me he's got buddies that run just the auxiliary line that comes from here, feeds back here to the sending unit. You've seen that line on there. Now I said in the last video, I'll never, never ran that, I'll never run that. But you know what, after I saw this oil system and talked over with Jason and Tim Meyer and I got a better understanding, I might do that and you'll see why. Because that's the thing, you can't always be so hard and fast that you're, you're never gonna change, you're never gonna flex, you're never gonna learn and develop because that's gonna put you behind. Now, let's check out the oiling system. So there's my oil diagram and my interpretation of it. Now the oil pump's sucking up that oil, pushing it through that part of the block and then going into the oil filter, just like this. Now you saw where the oil's going up through this. This main galley is short, it's a 90 degree angle. And that's what I'm trying to show you. Look here and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about on the actual block. Now you can see right here, because this is really short, that 90 degree bend where that oil has to twist. You need to get in there and clean that out with some type of burr. Now, the things we're not gonna talk about are bearing clearances, what type of oil, and the pump, whether it's a standard volume or high volume. Those are actually for another talk because there's, there's too much variability with that. We want, I wanna just stick to the basics. So now that we know that, all the oil goes up to this. So we're gonna call this plug the 585, just for a way to identify it. The origin, basically, of where the oil comes from the pump. All these little pieces of tape that I have on here show the oil system larger than 500 thousandths, half inch. That includes this big line here, the main feed to the right-sided lifter galley, the left-sided lifter galley. All the rest, these diagonals here, are 313 thousandths in diameter. Whereas the cam bearings, the path to the cam bearing, these are all 250 thousandths, quarter inch. So here's the oil path, and this is the key. When that oil comes up here, the first part of it goes up to the first cam bearing, and that's what these guys represent, the first cam bearing. So the oil split and goes up to there. It also goes down to the main bearing. Oil's that, then it goes up, to the right-sided lifter galley. And that's what oils first. This right-sided lifter galley, this is the key with the Cleveland. This is why they have an issue, because they're trying to oil from one galley, they're trying to oil the mains, the cams, and the rest of the system, and then feed it over from the rear main to the left side. Just for identification purposes, the right side of the car when you're, is always from when you're sitting in the seat. The right side is the passenger side. The left side's the drivers, and that's how you look at it with these galleys. So actually, this is left side is kind of put here, but I can't draw in 3D. So this is kind of coming this way. And you'll see that when I show you right now what I'm talking about. The filter, obviously, you know, screws onto here, okay? The oil pump's sucking that oil up to here, pushing in the filter and pushing it back through here and going through the rest of the galleys. That area, which you saw, is almost a 90-degree bend, has a lot of torturous areas, and that needs to be cleaned out chamfered and radiused and that's an important factor you should be thinking about in any cleveland there's the hole here at the bottom of the block and that's where the oil pump bolts on so it's bringing that oil up through there to through that port now here's this this is a 585 plug and that, i call that the 585 because it's easy to identify and hopefully when i say that you know right where we are when we're talking the schematic and that feeds through here through the main part of the journal it's coming through here. Now it splits and it's feeding this cam bearing here and also feeding the main bearing here. You can see the hole here and here. Now that big area right there, that's going all the way up to the right side of galley and you can see it right here. So now that the oil's coming down here to the main, it's gonna go back up this way and feed the right side of the oil galley. That's the key thing with a Cleveland. 
Look at what it's trying to do. Once it goes down this galley, these are the diagonals that you'll see in the main journals. There'll be two holes in each one except for the rear. Each hole, one goes to the cam bearing, and then one comes down here and feeds the main bearing. So the oil's kind of coming like this, down this diagonal, feed the main, then up to feed the cam. Same thing here, down this diagonal, feeds the main, then up to feed the cam bearings. All the way down, until you get to the fifth rear main. It still comes down, the galley comes here and feeds this, like it does here, and some still goes to the cam, but then it has to go to the left side of the galley, which I showed you that plug, all the way up here and feed the whole left side of the lifter galleys and lifter bores. So really the Cleveland oiling system consists of lots of leaks and to improve it, you have to control the leaks. And that's what we do with restrictors and that's what I'm trying to impress upon you. So I'll show you a picture of the galley. There's not much to see. Is it worth it to try to put some kind of burr to clean it out? Look at it right now. So as you're looking at this video, you can see the oil galley coming down, which is just a long straight galley, not much in there. Now there might be a couple areas you could clean up. Really, it's gotta find the right tool that you could go in there and clean it up with and deburr it or smooth it up. The auxiliary oil line that we talk about adapts right here with a line going all the way back to here. When I look at that, I was never into it until I started looking at the oil diagram in depth. And then I realized what you're doing is you might be taking a little bit of flow from here, but you're adding it here, which is going to put more oil all the way down here to the mains. And that's what you want to do. And it also helps the left side galley. So it looks like it's a win-win situation. That's something I want to try out on that block that we're going to use. Now let's look at the engine and see what it looks like and compare it. I had already showed you these guys here. That plug here, which is a big half inch and the 250 thousandths cam feed galley. Here's where the oil pump bolts on right here, these two bolts. And that's the main galley that goes to the filter. This definitely needs to be reworked. The gasket that you use, some people use it, some people don't, I always do. You could actually trim it out a little bit bigger, just don't go past that gasket. And this block was six of 1970 stamped on there. So looking at this, this is the rear main. It has three different galleys. The middle one goes to the cam bearings, just like all of them. And then when you look at this side here, that's going to the right side passenger oil galley because it blocks upside down and you think about rotating it and this goes to the left side and that's where the restrictors go they go right in here but you can see that they've been tapped and there's one plug here that one was taken out and the rest have been taken out but you don't restrict the first one in the moroso kit And the last one goes to decrease flow to the left side oil galley, thereby keeping the oil down in these mains. And that's how the cam restrictor kit is put in. And they're screwed into the oil galley that feeds the cam in two, three, four, and then what goes to the left side lifter galley. That's where those restrictors go. They don't go in number one. Now you could put one there, but I think the reason they don't is because you think about it. To get to this, you can't put it in the main because when this oil is coming through here to the 585, it's automatically going up to the cam. It's not going to do any good down here. If you're going to put an oil restrictor in, you need to go past the 585 and put it up here. That restricts the flow to that number one cam bearing. Now, here's what Tim Meyer's system does, his restrictor cam bearings. And if you've seen his cam bearings, they're a round bearing like any other cam bearing, but they have a hole on the outside of the bearing, 
which goes against the cam journal. So they're put into this area right here, all five of them. Because what those cam bearings do, those cam bearings move the clock position from six o'clock, which is straight up and down, to three to four o'clock off to the side. And so what happens is when that oil comes up to oil the cam bearing, now remember, oil restrictors reduce oil to the cam bearings, not the lifters. That oil hits the bearing, it can't go any further, so it goes and follows that channel, and that's what slows it down or restricts the flow to the cam bearings. By keeping it slowed down, the flow slowed down, so it keeps concentrated volume at the main bearings. That's the theory behind it. Now with Tim's system, what you do, this is a pretty big hole. Remember, I said it was 500. Thousands. So that big hole's feeding the first main, and you also have what was feeding from the 585, two different orifices, two different galleys. So with Tim's kit, what he does is he plugs that big half-inch hole and puts a pipe plug in there. Obviously, it's underneath the bearing, so the bearing sits flush and doesn't affect that. And then that hole, which we said was 250 thousandths, he drills it out to 5 sixteenths. That way it kind of makes a little bit more flow to that one bearing, and you're only having one area of flow to that first main. So here again are the two areas that we're talking about. Here's the big half-inch hole, and here's the cam bearing feed, that galley, which is 250 thousandths. So what Tim's doing is plugging this because you're going to have flow to the main from this. You can see the little areas that are feeding it. Look how big that hole is. That's a head bolt right down in it. That thing's moving a lot of oil, and you can get by with less and just sustain it with this being a little bit bigger. Diagram that he supplied, and you can see the picture of the holes that you're plugging and drilling. But the path of the oil is in red, the stock Ford. Oil's coming up here, it's going down and feeding the mains and the cam journal, and it's going up to the right sided galley. And that's what feeds the whole part of the engine that we showed you here. And that's what we're trying to do is keep that oil restricted down to the mains. What else can you do for the oiling system? Well, we talked about all the galleys. Now there's the left side. I didn't put the camera down there. It looks like the right side. There might be some areas to clean up. That I can't say for sure until you look at your own situation and see what kind of tool you could use to get in there. But those tricks or tips, like I'm saying, it's important to go through everywhere you can and see and look for those radiuses. There's a couple spots on the drain back holes that need to be opened up. Check this out. So here's a couple areas that need, need to be paid attention to. And you can see this right here, that's a drain back. And it comes down in front by the time and chain area. But when you put on the head gasket in the head, it blocks off, all this area is blocked off. It needs to be opened up and radiused. They're all off a little bit. And that's something you should check and make sure that's patent on yours and try to get the best flow you can to return the oil back. And those holes come down here. They're up in this area, and there's one over here, back here. Make sure you clean those out and radius them. This area here, where the sending unit goes, and if you use the axillary line, it bolts in back here, plums in back here. But if you look down here, and I'll show you a picture with a camera, going down in it, it's pretty narrow down there. That could probably benefit from cleaning it up. And here's the back, the cam bearing plug back here. These are the two galleys back here. When you look at one with a priority oiling, they, a lot of times they have three of them, and one of them is dedicated to the mains, which also lubes the rock. All right, guys, rock. All right, guys, so you saw the back of the block, which showed the back of the rear oil galleys. I wanted to clarify a few things. First of all, with a priority oiling, system. It doesn't always have to be a dedicated oil galley to the mains and the rods, but it needs to oil them. The difference between the priority and non-priority is the fact that you're oiling the mains, which oil the rods first, whereas in the non-priority, like the Cleveland, you're trying to oil everything at once. Now, one thing that Jason Murphy and, and mentioned to me, and also Tim Meyer, is that when you go down these subsequent lines of lubrication, you're losing 
the pressure is dropping. So it may be 80 to 100 pounds leaving the pump here, but by the time you get back here, it may be 60, maybe 58. This side always suffers a little bit. And those are things to take in consideration. Now, I kind of was a little hard on the Cleveland's oiling system because in, in reality, it's not that bad. You know, 65 to seven grand, you probably have no issues. You know, and some people, like I said, Jason Murphy said that his buddy was running 7,700. So it's important to fix the oiling system or make it the best you can right from the get-go. Now, some people I'll mention on here, I've never had any oiling problems. I don't do any of that stuff. And that's, that's where the experience comes into play. I will tell you this. I talked to Darren Morgan today. We were talking about this. Here's what he said. He said that that's a win-win situation. Anytime that you can take any of the galleys and smooth them out to a better transition, you're going to pick up horsepower. He said you can pick up three to five horsepower just because that oil pump is not having to work so hard. No pumping losses there. Now, now the, what he told me is that somewhere between 10 to 15% loss with a 90 degree turn. Now, when I show you this, because I wanted to point out a couple things I didn't say prior to this, I may have alluded to it, but I want to make sure that you understand. It's tough to get into some of these oil galleys to, to smooth them out. But I'll tell you, the biggest ones are easy to get to, and I'm going to show you. The filter housing, boss, you unscrew that, it's a direct 90 degree bend. You radius that, you're going to pick up a lot of oil right from the get-go. The same with Tim Meyer's adapter that you can put on. You know, you can see that. That's huge. I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to put it on this motor and see what we can do. When you use that, let me show you. I'd, sh I'd shown you earlier in the video, but you can see the two differences between that hole. When you take this off, you'll see, I'll show you on the camera, how torturous it is. The same thing with that 585. Now, one thing I want to clarify here, because I, I, I didn't mention it directly, but it goes like this. That oil filter is pushing oil to that passage. Now, it doesn't go directly to here. It does empty into that 585, and I'll show you what, what it looks like. And I'll tell you, that is also a sharp turn. You grind all those out of there, like I showed you, where the oil pump bolts to the block, if you saw that picture, you grind all that and smooth all that out of there. It's a win-win situation. Now, like I said before, when I see where that axillary line is pumping right into here, an extra who knows how much pressure. Anything is better than nothing back here because you're supplementing the mains. So that's something I overlooked and I never paid attention to it. So I think that's a good idea, a win-win situation, like I said. Now, a couple other things that I, I want to mention, the oil filter. If you're using a stock FL1A, that's a 20 micron filter and that uses that adapter. You know, it's a, it's, a it's a bypass filter. Whereas if you're using this, use a 51268 Wix filter, that's not a bypass. It does have 25 microns filtering capability. I, hopefully you have a better understanding. I, I do want to throw this out there. One of the best ways to restrict the oil is use the lifter bore bushings which replace, go right to the bore, then you machine them to fit the clearance between the lifter. Now, the issue with that is you're only having a 30 to 60 thousandths hole in that bushing to oil the lifter, and that's it. Now, if you think about the oil passage, here's a picture here. That bushing cuts off some of the circulation through that galley, but it's round and that lifter's straight, so the oil is still flowing past that galley, but that's how it slows it down and restricts it also, is by cutting those lifters out of that equation, that big loss of pressure on those galleys where the lifter goes in. So like I said, these little things are what's gonna make your Cleveland live a lot longer and have a lot better oil supply. Just the, I'll show you just the 10 minutes it would take you to probably grind that out in some of those areas, especially if you saw the 585 where I showed the picture where it's going up. If you can get in there and transition some of those sharp edges, it's gonna make all the difference in the world. Check this out. Let me show you a little closer up detail, stuff that I think you guys can do real easy without getting into a lot of grinding and, and trying to find them special bits. But I've seen people go like crazy to try to remove these. You can see with a chisel, they try to pound it out of there to get it loose. I found basically putting on two nuts, like a lock nut and loosening that up works for me. What I used was 
It feels like dash eight bulkhead connector nut. And then the same thing with a, just a regular cap. Rather than try to force it out of there. But I look at this block and I can tell you, there's a lot of areas of improvement and I can't wait to do it. Kind of just lock it on there. And once you break it loose, it comes out pretty easy. I can find out. And here's the one out of this block from 1970. Now this is what I use, just a little boroscope. Master Force from Menards. I'll tell you, th this thing, I've seen so many things with this. And you can record video with it, which is what you're going to see here. So let me kind of show you what I got. First, we're going to go through the oil filter that I just took off. The boss that you put the oil filter on. And you'll see the big 90 degree. Here it is right here. Now, if you saw that, you could see the areas where you go in behind that filter adapter. You could round that all out of there and smooth those radiuses. Now, here's the 585 plug we talked about. I'll give you a little more in depth and you can see where I'm talking about. So there, so you saw me now going through the bottom main journal with the big 500 thousandths hole up through to the right lifter side galley. You can see me pushing the wire up there. All those areas are sharp, man. You radius all those and you're gonna see a big difference in your oil system. You might not even need anything, I don't know. That's, it's, it's, you can't really say that, but it's just amazing how many strictures there are and how many areas that could be massaged and that you'll benefit from taking the time and smoothing out all those areas. Hopefully you got something out of this video. I appreciate guys coming by the Drag Boss Garage. There's a lot more to come. I'll get that, this piston to valve clearance done. Like I said, my kids got a bunny. They're not really into coming out and working in the garage. I'll get this done, which I'm at a, I need that kind of pressure the next four to six weeks. Uh, my fuel system should be here. All the PTF hose from Orn Brothers. Appreciate it, guys. And the next week, we'll film that episode of putting the fuel system back together. We'll get the episode finished on the wheels that we put the 5.8 studs in. But my wife finished putting that fuel pump together, so we got a lot of videos to pump out. Stay safe. Appreciate you tuning in Drag Boss Garage, because I hear Cleveland's make power.